How does traffic in a dense urban environment really work? Creating a city with smooth traffic flow is like assembling an orchestra to play a symphony. Every instrument needs to perform and they all need to play together to make the magic happen. So if you want to become the mayor famous for building great cities, you need to know all your tools and how they should be intertwined to create the symphony of traffic pulsating through your city. Today I want to show you three principles for managing traffic. Regardless of the game you are playing, as long as it mimics real life traffic to some extent. And of course also provides the proper tools to do it. Our peeps, Drakadir, we are returning to Draken to build an industry expansion. But in order to understand its inner workings, we will have to talk about a lot of stuff first. Some of the quirks of the original City Skylines, whether and how this would also apply in City Skylines 2 and so on. All of this is related to set principles, going through a few scenarios from micro to macro and showing how they are supposed to work together. The first principle you may know already, it's diverge before converge as introduced in another video of mine a few months back. It pretty much covers all the range from micro to macro starting at single junctions up to large railway layouts. But today I want to approach it from a slightly different angle. In a nutshell, a vehicle's behavior on a lane is to move forward, whereas on a junction a vehicle eventually has to stop, wait for the junction to be clear, merge and then continue its journey. So pretty much junctions are causing a disruption of traffic flow because vehicles entering the junction from a different lane can interrupt the flow on our lane. But don't worry, to increase the throughput of junctions or also bigger structures it is always a good idea to first split or diverge the traffic on the lane depending on direction of travel using asymmetrical roads. Then when it comes to merging or converging on a lane and continuing the journey, multiple vehicles can accelerate in parallel and thus clearing any backed up traffic more rapidly than vehicles from our single lane could follow. This is universal, it will work in every game modeled after real life because this is how it works in real life. Here I want to introduce the second principle, I'd call reducing options. This will be very interesting in regards of City Skylines 2 as you will see later. Looking at such a four-way intersection, you can see that traffic from three directions is going to distract or interrupt the traffic coming from the one lane we are looking at. We are looking for a way to reduce the amount of interferences. This principle is dedicated to dealing with high loads of traffic as for example in an industrial area. So what we do is, instead of connecting everything to each other, we are limiting the options of where traffic can come from or other traffic wants to go to by using one-way streets. So the same junction with one-way roads now only has one source of interfering traffic. Two directions coming in, two directions going out. I mean we still need to think about the broader picture how traffic might get to places in the other direction, but for now let's stick with our small example here. By setting up this junction as a one-way junction, we successfully reduce the amount of distractions from 3 to 1. Depending on the traffic load, we probably don't even want to have a junction at all, for this one interference may still cause too much interruption of traffic flow. In an ideal case, we want traffic to pass junctions like they would not exist at all, to keep the speed of travel like on a lane. Remember, the faster any vehicle can reach its destination, the earlier the vehicle gets removed from the active agent count, because any vehicle that is safely parked somewhere or despawned after having finished its delivery trip is not going to cause traffic jams or disturbances. So if a junction should not suffice, how about a merging strip? Instead of having a simple junction, we create a strip of road to ease the switching of directions. First example here would be we have one dominant direction of travel and one less busy direction. In this case, you want traffic at the start of the strip to switch from the dominant direction side onto the lesser frequented lane in order to create spaces in the dominant traffic flow where at the end of the strip traffic from the other lane can merge into. Now let's say that still does not work with the amount of traffic trying to get through here. Then the next step would be to help those which want to switch lanes out with their own dedicated 
dedicated lane. At the entry of the strip we separate those from the two busy directions and at the end we let them merge again. Should even that not be sufficient, diverge before converge dictates that we need to look further ahead, where traffic wants to go to on the next junction, and provide lanes for each of those directions. Basically we are stacking strips of lanes. I'll show you an example in a second, but first what shall we do when the dominant direction goes diagonal, like such. Well in this case we will have to force the dominant direction going straight by doing something like this. Ok, as an example for strip stacking, let me explain how the entrance into Dragon's main industrial area works. I opened the traffic manager lane connector so you can see how traffic is routed here. There are three directions where traffic is coming from, so we will have to merge those three directions causing two interferences for each. Direction 1 enters from the highway and the processed material warehouses, Direction 2 comes from the industry located around the harbor and Direction 3 is the traffic from the industry's DLC processed processed materials warehouses. By the way, at the time of this recording the junction is strangely quiet. Should a few warehouses decide, ok, we are exporting now, each letting 15 trucks loose, this can change drastically within a few seconds. Anyway, before the big conversion here, each direction was given a diverging strip, pretty much just pre-sorting if a truck wants to go to the left or right side of the industry area. These also serve as buffer should this junction become crowded, because if so, mostly just one direction is affected. A junction like this becoming busy at first may look bad because we could have traffic coming to a standstill on these buffer lanes. But the important part here is the difference in travel speed. Normally the speed in the industrial area is at 40 km an hour. The highway leading into it though has a speed of 100, meaning any backed up traffic can clear up pretty quickly again. The faster road after a forced halt allows the junction to free up quickly before the trucks again have to slow down when actually entering the area. So so it pretty much sucks any traffic jam out of the junction because of the higher speed. And that is the part that matters in this situation, because the occasional traffic clock up is inevitable. Remember this trick for your own installations. Moving on, the main strip here consisting of three lanes pretty much diverges the traffic from the right lane, again for two possible destinations. Either go to the cargo station on the middle lane or venture into the actual industry area on the right lane. Then up here the left lane also has such a split, where trucks have to diverge between two possible directions, either enter the area at the first possible exit or go further left. Further left means there are more unique factories. Conveniently the processed raw materials for those also enter the strip from the left, so in theory they should stick to the left lane not having to cross with the other traffic. It does not always work out this way, but mostly, which is good enough. Keeping the theoretical main direction of where trucks want to go to in mind certainly helps planning such a monstrosity. Then at this junction we have two merchant strips heading either left or right to merge with the traffic which needs to move within the area. This merchant strip to our left then lets traffic coming from the industry area also go further left, whereas it forces the traffic coming from the entrance to enter the area here. This means we do not know a dominant direction of travel because this depends on the traffic load whether more trucks are coming from within the area or from the entrance. Same for the other direction. We should not force the traffic from the industry area to have to go through the station. That is why it also has the option to cross lanes here. This is just for the access to these few buildings here, because normally traffic from the industry area which wants to go further right can use the slip lane. Now having left the micro, let us have a look at the traffic AI and a common misconception within the City Skylines community. When you are looking for information about how traffic in City Skylines works, you will find one piece particularly often being repeated like a mantra. Traffic chooses the fastest route. What most people mean by that is the behavior shown in this little example. The fire truck is given two possible routes, a shorter normal road and parallel to it a highway ramp. It will always pick the route that brings it to its destination in the shortest amount of time. So because the highway ramp allows double the speed of travel, it in this case is the fastest route. The missing part that gets hardly mentioned though is how vehicles choose their destination. Or in our case, how the fire station serving our fire is picked. Because this works by mere distance. And as the example shows, this was not a particularly clever choice by the developers of the original. And even after years, still causes a lot of confusion, especially for new players. 
Now this clearly is part of the original City Skylines being quirky and for sure will be fixed in City Skylines 2, right? Uh, I mean, the agents in City Skylines 2 are supposed to be much more clever in picking their paths as described in this article about transport costs and other factors determining which route an agent favors. So the mere distance nonsense is off the table. But picking the shortest route is still a major driver in these considerations. So the shortest route to the destination is still something to keep in mind, meaning with adjusting speeds we can still make roads more or less favorable given we can adjust the speeds of roads. At the same time, because of the traffic AI in City Skylines Tour is more clever and also would utilize multiple lanes, adding more lanes might at first seem to be a reasonable solution to all upcoming problems. But is it really? You see, giving all this room for the traffic AI to decide will result in constant re-evaluations of what the fastest route is. As we know, City Skylines 2 is only limited by our hardware. So we have a new challenge ahead of us. How to build effective cities without always having to offer multiple lanes. Glad we already know about limiting options. By directly steering traffic on a single lane only where it needs to go, we can reduce the amount of CPU power the AI requires to figure out if its route is still the fastest. Because if it is the only route and only lane to get there, the re-evaluation will pretty much just not happen as there are no further options and this way we can keep the processing of traffic finding its optimal way to a minimum. Okay, now that we know all this, and knowing that the shortest route will keep its position as major factor for AI routing in City Skylines 2 as well, we should be able to keep our streets free of the gridlock, right? Well, yes and no. You see, what I shared with you today are tools to keep the traffic flowing, scaling that up to even manage heavy industrial traffic, so we are able to prevent the gridlock, yes. But actually, we do not want to build an entire city this way, because that would result in tons and tons of road systems. Just imagine, we would build highways over the river to deliver all those goods from the industrial area to this big commercial zone. How many highways would we need? Two? Three? Four? The amount of space wasted on roads costing us money without producing income in comparison to our commercial buildings selling the goods would be humongous. So, to really scale up your city's density and allow for such a vast commercial zone not generating traffic problems itself, let me introduce you to the last and most powerful transportation. Well, it's more of a concept than a principle. But did you know that trains are going faster than highways? So they have an advantage on establishing the shortest route? I call this use stations as wormholes, because what they do is leave all the busy traffic behind but make passengers and goods reach their destination. If you want to have a big sprawling city, well you need those cargo stations near your commercial zones and passenger stations of sorts near every point of interest within your city. Sure, the cargo trucks will generate a little bit of traffic in the station surroundings, but that traffic should dissipate quickly into the city's grid. In order to make railways work, we will again need the same tools as with roads. But additionally, make sure there is always exactly one or multiple train length between junctions, so other trains can pass by without our tail blocking their paths to keep them free flowing as well. So what you want to do my friend is when starting your city to also plan for where the tracks and stations are going to be for this is the end game. Yes, trains and stations are expensive, but compare these expenses to the amount of road infrastructure and wasted space for profitable buildings required otherwise and you surely agree trains are the way cheaper solution which really allow for high density zoning. Okay now let's have a look on what we built today and the changes to existing infrastructure to pull it off. Remember me stating that it is important to develop a feel for it when it comes to how big of an industry area a station can serve. Yes this I'd say is the maximum a single station can handle. We went with one way roads all the way nothing fancy then services in between and then pretty much the same setup below. I just kept those very basic and simple because such things tend to become complex 
complicated on their own. See this road I had to switch to a three lane to actually manage the routing here because for some reason this station seems to be more attractive than the other one. Then placement of warehouses is very important because of the destination being picked by distance. We actually want those warehouses to be closest to the processing industry buildings which is why I moved these warehouses as far back as possible. This is important because we need these warehouses as drop off and distribution spots for the processed materials and those down at the harbor and the new ones for actually supplying the areas. Then as we added new stations we increased the amount of train traffic so we had to make adjustments to our rail infrastructure. First I wanted the trains coming from our new area to bypass the processing station so that's why they got their tunnel here. Also processing should be able to deliver processed materials to our new stations. Then because of our new stations generating a lot more trains we had to think of higher throughput in this area. To do that I wanted two tracks heading north for we will later expand the city north as well. Also to ease the amount of train traffic on the right tracks I figured we maybe should limit options here and give red light station a separate track meaning only these three stations require train traffic on the right tracks. Red light station would be accessible from the middle only. We just need to ensure that also this station has access to red light station. So as you can see it's a big mix of using diverge before converge and limiting options and all that stuff together. By the way this is the only case uh, we do not need a full train length between those two junctions because for the following train it does not matter whether the train before it had taken the left north or the right to red light station. In the future we may have to consider running two tracks along the river here should this single one not be able to keep up with the amount of trains heading north. Okay so I received a lot of comments on my last bit of more technical video. I hopefully managed to explain things better this time. Please leave your question and thoughts in the comments below. I am planning on doing a subscriber special live stream in which we are going to visit the city while I'm going to be able to react to questions from the chat but will also pick comments from this video to answer in that stream. It is supposed to be a 10k subscriber special but eventually we will just have to adjust the number because the thing that is preventing me from doing such a stream right now is my hardware so new computer first then the special. Thanks for watching, see you next time with another very interesting infrastructure project. Bye!